All right, Sonia. Yeah. Sonia, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque. And tell me about your family growing up. You had both your parents? Um, yeah, I did. Um, and my sisters, my two sisters. Um, how, how would you describe your childhood? Horrible. <laughs> um, In what ways? Uh, my dad raped me and my sisters growing up <clears throat> um, from that I can remember like age three till I was nine. Um, we went to foster care. Um, Did he get caught? Yeah, he was charged. Um, he got 21 years. Uh, my mom, it's my biological father, not my sisters. Um, and my mom to seemed to like blame everything on me in a way. Um, I got, I was in foster care. My sisters got out of foster care, went back to my mom. After a while, I was wondering why I wasn't. My mom didn't want me. Um, my sister finally made my mom take me home. And then at 11, um, I came home from school with all my stuff packed up and my mom told me I had to leave. Um, from there, I met my kids' dad. Um, I was 13, had my first baby. I got five kids. Um, so, and then just, it was a bad relationship <clears throat> with my kids' dad. He beat me, like severely beat me. Um, all the way from 13 until I was 22. And then I had left him finally and started getting my life together. And then my son, my three-year-old son was killed. Um, <clears throat> my sister beat my son to death. Um, And from there, I kind of lost, I lost it for a while. I lost, lost it. Um, I started trying to commit suicide. Um, got really heavy into drugs. Just, and I didn't want to be back home where everything had happened. And so I, three o'clock in the morning one night, left and hitchhiked and got dropped off in Watts, California at like three, four in the morning at the Rosa Park station. And I've been in California since. Um, it's been hell out here too, as a female on the streets. Um, I've been raped, I've been beat, I've been hit by a car, had 147 stitches, like intentionally. Um, the guy ran me over. Um, I was kidnapped. The stuffed in the trunk of a car for two days, stabbed right here. Um, woke up 12 days later in ICU because uh, they had hit an artery. Just, it's been, it's been tough. And I don't know, it's kind of like, I want to get my life together, but at the same time, like, I feel like I've given up a lot. Just not really having anybody. I don't have nobody. I don't, my mom's side of the family, they, pretty much disowned me because they blamed me for what my father did. My dad's side pretty much disowned me because they don't believe that it happened. So I'm literally like out here by myself. Where are your other kids? Um, they are with family um, through my children's dad's side of the family. Yeah. And you're living where now? Um, back and forth between here, well, yeah, here and Lancaster. I kind of just, when I get tired of all the crap in Lancaster, I come out here. When I get tired of here, I go to, back to Lancaster. Yeah, there's crap in both places. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And you're just basically homeless? You're just yeah. wing, winging it night by night? Yeah. And the drugs are part of your life, too? Yes. What's, what's your drug currently? Crystal and ecstasy. When did that start? Well, I've kind of been off and on with Crystal for a while. Like my childhood, my parents used to cook meth um, in a little camper trailer we were all living in. Um, so it's, it's 
been in my life, like pretty much my <laughs> my whole life, but I was able to to smoke and then stay clean for like months at a time and not have a problem with it now. Like since 2018, I don't think I've been completely sober um, one time since 2018. It's hard to like function without it now, it feels like. Do you have anybody in your life now? I mean, do you have contact with your family? No. I don't want contact with my family. I just, they've made my life hard and they've made my life hell. I've tried to mend things with my mom so many times, but she just, she don't want it. I, matter of fact, I called her on Mother's Day. Well, I called my sister, spoke to my sister and tried to talk to my mom. My mom wouldn't talk to me and I had, it upset me so bad that I hung up the phone and I texted my sister and I told her, I said, hey, do you think mom would even care if I died? Like, do you think she would care? And my sister was like, just know that I would care. I'm like, damn, that's, that's kind of cold. Like, I don't understand. Being a mother, I don't understand how a mother could just, just not have any care in the world for her own child. Like, I don't know. Because even my kids not being with me, I still, I think about my kids every day and I love my kids to death. But, yeah. How often do you talk to your kids? Um, I made it their choice. Um, I felt at 13, it would be an okay age for them to possibly comprehend everything that had happened. And I felt at the age 13, you know, what family does have them for them to sit them down and talk to them and it be their choice whether they want me in their life or not. And I can't be angry with them if they don't, I can't. Um, that's something that I have, have to accept. So if you're they waiting don't. for them to call you? Yeah. I just don't, I don't wanna confuse them. I don't want, I don't wanna make things harder in school and all that because like I said, I've been in foster care and like it's hard. It's hard having, it's like being pulled both ways or, you know, me not being able to, me telling them I'm coming to see them and then not being able to make it. And that's hard on a child. That is, that is really hard on a child. My mom used to do it to us all the time. Oh, I'm coming to see you, I'm coming to visit. And wouldn't show up to our visits. And that shit hurts. And that shit really messes, messes with you mentally, emotionally. It has an effect on school. Like just a lot, it has a, a lot. Yeah, so I didn't want that for my kids. I wanted, most of all, I wanted my kids to have a way better life than I did growing up. I wanted them to, to not go through any of the stuff I went through. And just, yeah, I just wanted them to have a way better life than I did. And I, I, I couldn't give that to them at the time. How do you support yourself now? Um, just hustle. Like, I recycle. Um, just whatever. Do you do? Do you date guys for? Nope. You don't. Do <laughs> no, I really don't. <laughs> You're one of the few. It's crazy because that is something that has. Because I like to dress provocative. That's just that's just me. But that has. I was just recently engaged to a guy and. He swore up and down, swore up and down, swore up and down that I was prostituting. And it like literally ripped our relationship apart. And I'm like, if I could understand if I was losing him over stuff that I was doing, because then I mean, that's, I have to accept that. But to lose somebody you really like care about and love, like over something that you're really not doing is hard. It's, it's hard. And, but I, I guess, the way I dress, the way I'm just like, I don't know. I get it all the time though, all the time. Everybody thinks that, that I'd be out here doing that and I'm like, no. What emotions do you go through living this lifestyle? Um, to be honest with you, like at this point I'm pretty numb. That's how I feel. Um, 
I'm not gonna lie, there's there's times that I sit and I think about my kids. I think about just everything. I think about if my mom would have cared, if I would have had a different child. Just I think about a lot of things, and and it's hard. I've, I'm like I said, I battle uh, I battle suicide. Like I like a lot, a lot, a lot. That's I got scars on my legs from me, like literally just like losing it and just cutting my legs like crazy, like actually like cutting them, cutting them. Um, I have scars all up my arms. I've tried to OD. I've, it's hard, it's hard to deal with. It's not having anybody, it's, it's hard. And then I go through hell on the streets because people look at me like, like, okay, if we rob her, or we beat her, or we rape her, or whatever. She's not gonna go to the police because I don't wanna be called a snitch. <laughs> Cause it's just gonna make it harder for me. But she's not gonna go to the police. She doesn't have anybody that's gonna back her up. She ain't gonna do nothing. So there's no consequences to what we do to her. And that's how really how they look at me. I've had people tell me that. Like, and that's hard, that's hard, really hard. I've had dudes burn my tents, my tent down in the middle of the night um, cuz I won't sleep with them I I go I go through a lot it's it's hard I don't I say I don't wish being homeless even on my worst enemies I don't it's it's hard and to even live with the fact that everybody looks at you so crazy everybody looks at you like you're nasty like you're um and I mean, I, I can see that, you know, some people don't take care of themselves, but I feel like that's because they get lost. They, they quit caring. They, I have to remind myself every day, every day. To be numb is one thing, but to like, just not care anymore about nothing. I can't do that to myself. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard. What are, you, what are you afraid of now? Not making, just either ending up dead. My, okay, I'll be honest with you. My biggest fear, my biggest fear in life, honestly, is because I don't have nobody like, I'm so scared that I'm gonna end up like mangled up in a bush somewhere, dead, and ain't nobody even gonna know because ain't nobody gonna look for me. Like, that's my biggest fear. Because it happens too often to females out here, they end up dead. It just scares me like to know that I don't even have anybody that would look for me. Like, I disappear, you know, I, I, I come and I go because I don't have anybody. So I don't even, it wouldn't even be a thought in somebody's mind like, oh, we haven't seen her, you know, wonder, it just, yeah, it sucks. It, it really sucks. Do you have any friends, real, real friends? I, I do. Um, I have two that I would consider real friends, um, but they got a lot going on in their lives too right now. And I try not to put that stress on them. Are there things about this life that you like? The, the, the freedom, the lack of responsibility? The... I wouldn't say the lack of responsibility, but Just being out outdoors, I guess. Um, I'm a very outdoors person. Uh, whether it comes to like, you're sleeping outdoors every night. Yeah. Like, out in Lancaster, I I I don't normally. I got to where about a year and a half, almost two years ago, I quit sleeping in tents because they kept getting burnt down. So like, I always build 
me like a little a little shack thing, you know, something something that's at least somewhat comfortable, somewhat a little bit more clean. Um, I just I don't I don't want to let myself go because I I feel that I have way more potential than that. Um, I just. It's hard, it's hard to find work too, because like, just my childhood, just everything, I have really bad PTSD. I have, um, I'm bipolar, uh, and I just, I have really bad anxiety. So when I start to get around a lot of people, I start panicking, I start feeling like, like I can't breathe. I start freaking out. I feel like, like everybody's closing in on me. I start feeling like everybody's judging me. It's just, it's hard, it's hard. I'm always looking for work, but my type of work is like something under the table, something, you know what I mean? Like something to where I won't have to really deal with a lot of people, like house cleaning, stuff like that. Um, just so I don't have to deal with so many people. But what would you have done differently in your life if you could have? Um, I would have kept going through school. Actually, no, you know what? To be honest with you, and a lot of people <laughs> say I'm crazy for this, but I'll be honest with you. I really wouldn't change anything, only because I know that at some point things are gonna get better and <clears throat> everything that I've been through has only made me stronger. It's only made me I'm not happy with where I am in life, but I'm happy with who I am. Um, Cause I know I'm very strong. Therefore, I don't think, I don't think I would change anything. Cause at this point it's just, it's a journey. Um, it's a hard journey, but it's a journey. And I know that at the end of the, the end of the road, like when everything starts to get better for me. I just know that I'm gonna be that much stronger. And yeah. Do you feel like the sexual abuse you went through as a child kind of changed the, the path of your life? Yeah, absolutely. It always does, it seems. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, it did, it did a lot. Um, I used to have, I haven't in a very long time, but I used to have like um, flashbacks, night terrors, um, wake up freaking out in the middle of the night, screaming. Um, now that I use drugs, I don't because I don't sleep very often, honestly. <laughs> um, that's actually my main, that's my main reason for using crystal is because I just, I don't want to go to sleep. I don't. It's hard to lay down at night alone in the cold. They like just, it's hard. It really is hard. Um, mostly alone. Like that's, that's, that's my biggest problem is just being alone. Like I'm, I'm, I'm so alone. Like people, I hear people all the time, like, oh, I don't have no family. I don't have this. But then, you know, you see them talking to this person, you know, they got this uncle, this, and, like, I really don't have anybody. Like I, every great once in a while, I talk to my sister and like every great once in a while, I don't get happy birthdays. I don't get Merry Christmas. I don't get, nobody contacts me on holidays. And sometimes I, I just think to myself, like, what, what did I do? Like, what did I do to them to deserve this? But then I have to realize like I was a child when all this started, <clears throat> I was a child and being a mother, there's nothing my child could do that could possibly make me not love them or, or be so hateful, so careless towards them. People are always like, oh, well, you don't have your kids, so what is that? I don't have my kids because I was a stronger person and I realized that I couldn't give my kids the life that they deserved. 
and I was able to, people call it selfish, but really it's not because I suffer every day without my kids. I hurt every day without my kids. Just so my kids could be happy, so my kids could have a better life. So I don't feel it's selfish. Um, I miss my kids all the time, all the time. What's been the lowest point of your life? Right now. Right now? Yeah. And the streets are tough. They are. They really are. It's, like I said, I wouldn't wish it on even my worst enemy to be out here. What was the best time of your life? Having my kids. Do you feel like you were loved as a child? No. No? Didn't have to think about that one. Yeah. I've, I've actually, I've told my mom, like, at one point I had told her, I said, I called her and I asked her for help. I said, mom, I need, I, like, I really need some help. Like, I really need help. She's like, with what? I said, myself. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm scared. She says, a what? I'm myself, like I'm scared of myself. I need help, can you get me some help? Like, I'm terrified. And she said, what the fuck do you expect me to do for you? And she hung up the phone. And I'm like, damn. Like I'm literally begging to her for help because I'm, I'm scared of myself. When a person becomes scared of themselves, that's bad. And as my mother, she couldn't even help me and or didn't even want to even try to help me and a couple weeks later I had talked to her and I told her I said I said I just want to be able to sit down and just be able to take a big deep breath in and just let it out and and feel okay for once feel just okay and I told her I said I can't even remember back to when I was a child I don't even remember being okay then, because I was going through the rape with my dad. By the time I started remembering things, you know? Um, like I've been, I've, I've, I've felt like the tightness, this, this, this heavy weight right here in my chest since I was little. Like I just, I wanna know what it feels like to, to just be okay. Did you describe yourself as self-destructive? Um, I mean, obviously, because I, I cut stuff, I really can't say no. But when things get overwhelming and And I feel like I just, I can't handle no more. I would rather do harm to myself than to somebody else, honestly. Um, but then it's not even that, it's just the fact of, when everything gets overwhelming, I just, I don't, I feel like I don't wanna be here. Like, I feel like there, what's the point? That's how I, that's how I feel in and I'm just, yeah, I just, there's times that I just, I don't want to be here. There was a point in my life just recently where I went through a stage where I felt like I had asked somebody, I said, you know, people wake up in the morning and they thank God that they woke up another day. I'm like, but do you know what it feels like to wake up in the morning angry with God that you woke up? like just straight anger because you lived another day you woke up another day and i hate that feeling as as humans we should love our life we should be grateful for our life and for a person to go through so much to where they just, to where they're angry that, that they have life. That they, it's just, it's,
it sucks. It sucks. And it sucks even more because I don't I don't want people to look at me like, oh, I'm so sorry. You, I don't want that from people. Like, I don't. To me, that, that that's negative attention to me. Um, but like. I would honestly, I would be happy if people could look at my life and realize that, hey, there's girls out here that are going through the same thing or worse and find some help for females like me. These streets are, they're nasty. They're, man, there's, there's women. And of course men too. There's, there's people, there's innocent people out here losing their lives left and right just because they're out here. People, very good hearted people, people that, that don't be doing bad things. They're ending up dead out here. Like, it's like people, it's like we, we end up homeless and slowly like our families start to just forget about us. Um, we just become like nobody. Like, and it's sad. It's really sad. So your, your drugs are ecstasy and, and meth? Yeah. What does what your typical day look like using those drugs? Mm, what do you mean? Like, you, you, don't, you don't wake up in the morning because you're probably up all night. Right. Skid Row. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. It's a zoo out there. It is. Matter of fact, this morning, me and my friend had a gun pulled on us because my friend told some guy, good morning. He's like, good morning. What's, how's your morning? He's like, what? And the guy like started like throwing gang signs. Or he ends up pulling a gun out. I'm like, what, bro? Like, let's just go. I'm like, that's negative attention. I'm trying to teach my, my friend. He's younger than me. I'm like, quit feeding into the negative, like the unnecessary bullshit is what I told him. Unnecessary bullshit. It's just, if it's, Cut it simple. If somebody starts to get upset, angry, we we may be able to handle it as an adult. We may be able to realize that that we're not upset, we're not angry about it, but can they? At that point, just walk away. Just walk away. Like, because my oof, people are out here just left and right killing each other over nothing. And like being homeless, we're right in like the middle of it all. Yeah. Sonia, what would you say is the most important thing you've learned in your life? <sighs> the most important thing would be... Ooh, I don't know, like, I can't, I really can't say one thing you know like because yeah. no, if, if, if you're there's, i've learned a, a lot if you're intelligent of, there's probably a whole box <laughs> i've learned yeah i've learned a, a lot um i try i try to be respectful i've learned like just because other people are disrespectful doesn't mean that i have to be disrespectful because two wrongs don't make a right and you never know what another person's going through. Um, you don't know if they just woke up to, to their child being dead or their mother being dead or you don't know that. I try to be understanding, considerate of other people and just, and to be humble, that kind of sums just all that up, you know, to be humble. Excellent. All right, Sonia, thank you so much for sharing your story. Yeah. I wish you the best of luck out there. Be careful. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.